evening, ladies and gentlemen. What does it mean to be an illiterate of the 21st century? With the world moving towards digital technology and the metaverse, does it mean that if we do not know how to code, we are considered an illiterate? Now, if you were to ask Google this very same question, you would get this quote from Elvin Toffler that says the 21st century illiterate would not be those who cannot read or write, but rather those who can't learn, unlearn, and relearn. Obviously, we know that Toffler is re referring to the ever rapid changing world that we are living in right now. What if our house is on fire and we do not know that the problem exists? Even worse, what if we know of the fire situation and we choose to ignore it? Does it not make us a far bigger illiterate than both of the above? Obviously, you will have guessed. The fire that I'm alluding to is the ever-pressing issue of climate change that has gotten the attention of the world leaders, uh, even more so in a great sense of urgency in the recent years. Now, questions. We're going to address three very important questions tonight. Number one, what does the world leader, what, what role do they have in helping to change the fate of our future? Does the onus lie solely onto uh, the decisions of the world leader? Number two, what does basic literacy of every person have to do with being a part of the solution? And number three, what do you and I as individuals have uh, in making changes to this pressing problem? Now, Let's address this. What is the role of the world leaders and policymakers with a very personal story of my, me and my mom, which I want to share with you, and which I think that you guys can relate to within your own stories as well. You see, my mom is a person obsessed with being organized. She loves to compartmentalize all her belongings with these neat little plastic bags the kind of plastic bags like this that you use in supermarket to pack your fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Uh, she would have a small, medium, large roll for different purposes. Yeah. Uh, she would use them to pack leftover food. Um, she would use them, uh, you know, when she travels. Uh, Mom would love to pack, uh, separate the socks uh, from the underwears, the uh, formal wears, from T-shirts. You know, she has the most impeccable suitcase that you've ever seen in anyone. You know, uh, and, you know, those are not the things that annoy me most. You know, what gets to me every time is we would start a fight in the kitchen sink because every time mom would roll out a brand new plastic bag, yeah, uh, to, to pack her trashes, the residues from uh, the, the kitchen sink, and, and throw it away. And I would explain to mom, you know, uh, about uh, global warming. I would explain to mom about the importance of recycling, uh, the, the problems, the pollutions in the landfills, as well as the everlasting lifespan of plastic bags. And mom would often listen without much dispute but the very next day, she would repeat exactly the same pattern again. Rinse and repeat. Now, before you guys cancel my mom, I want you to think about your own very inner circle. Yeah, because for every example of my mom out there, I'm sure you can relate this very same example to your friends and your family at home, who are perhaps some of the kindest, most well-intentioned individuals that simply cannot connect the dots between their trivial little actions at home and how it's going to impact 
the world at large. Now, that being said, whenever we go shopping, at the supermarket especially, mom would be the first person to remind me to bring along a recycle bag. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of... It's kind of strange because, you know, on the one hand, it's so difficult to get her to do the right thing, and on the other hand, you know, she would be the first to remind me, and of course, this has nothing to do with environmental conservation. You know, this solidary act with everyone else in Brunei, me included, is an act of defiance and resistance to pay the $2 for the overpriced plastic bag that we've all been used to getting for free. Now, for those people who are not familiar with public policy, this is a classic example of a systemic solution for a systemic problem. Now, the frustratingly inconvenient policy works far more effective than the best education that you can ever prescribe. Two dollars. $2 is all it takes to change a lifetime of bad habits. So, systemic change one, education zero. Now, what is my point here? If you are thinking, you'll be asking the same question. What is the point of education if all we need is to have some smart policy makers making smart decisions with their policy? if only world, the world evolved that simply. You know, it's way more complicated than that. But let me make my case for education, because I am convinced, you know, I, it, instead of, you know, I, I am someone who do not believe or have doubt about teaching old dogs new tricks. Yeah. But I'm a firm believer that the young people are the people who are going to change the world. After all, it is the world that, are, that they are going to inherit one day. Yeah, if they are the, not the people with the highest sense of urgency about the matter of climate change, who will? So I'm convinced that education still plays a critical role in moving the needle. But instead of playing the long game, instead of focusing on the short-term result, you know, we should play the long game in using education to solve the problem. And that starts with making sure that every school teaches the cause, the effect, and the solutions to climate change. Yeah, here is why. If our children grow up with the exposure and the access to sustainability education, they will be the same way that um, they grow up with the access to climate change uh, education. Uh, they will be uh, um, so they, they, they will be the same person that will uh, grow up with the value of protecting the planet deeply ingrained in their DNA they would be requiring no convincing to do the right thing uh, by the environment when they grow up. Now, this is very, very important because half the, half the battle that we are fighting today has to do with trying to convince people about climate change. Just think about it, right? When they grow up, there would be a group of climate warriors who would not hesitate to call out the adults for their bad practices and organizations for their environmental foul play. Yeah. When they assume positions in the government as leaders, they will not hesitate to make the right decisions, uh, to roll out policies that would benefit the environment. So instead of relying on the adults for the solutions, perhaps we need to get creative and find answers elsewhere. And that starts with perhaps looking at the young people for leadership, you know, with trusting them and encouraging them 
to go home with all that they learn about sustainability in school and teach them to their parents at home. You see, my mom may not have the same patience in listening to me uh, for all my ideals, idealistic aspiration to change the world, but as a proud uh, member of the helicopter parenting club myself, you know, I for one would have my ears for my two daughters far more than I would have for anyone here in the room. So, climate crisis, what is at stake? No, um, you may ask, why am I making such a big fuss about my mom's uh, plastic bag obsession? I hate to break it to you, but we are in a big mess right now in the world. Um, you know, if we do not change, yeah, uh, <laughs> this picture, um, you know, we, we're in a big mess right now because most of us are either ignorant or are ignoring the problem about climate change altogether. Why? Because we are not the people that are going to face the consequences one day. This young kid will. So, why is the world in a big mess? Because we are on track for a four degrees rise in global temperature, according to the World Bank report, you know, by the turn of the century. And the question is, what's the big deal about a four degrees Celsius rise in uh, average global temperature? Yeah, let me read it to you. Yeah, four degrees world would be one of unprecedented heat waves, severe droughts, and major floods in many regions with serious impacts on the ecosystem and associated service. So right now, in 2023, we have had experiences of the wrath of climate change, you know, while we are 77 years ahead, away from 2100. Imagine what would happen then. Uh, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't change, yeah, if we continue uh, to, um, if, if we continue uh, to party as usual, meaning that, you know, we continue with our quest for mass industrialization, mindless consumption, and treating our river as our sewage dump, we are on track to a four degrees rise in temperature, and by then we will be screwed. So, which is why, in 2015, you know, the international community came together and signed this Paris Climate Change Agreement, you know, in which you know, we are targeting for a two degrees rise instead of a four degrees. And in order to do that, right, uh, you know, by the year 2050, we need to reach net zero in our carbon emission, and to get there, by the year 2030, we need to reduce our carbon emission by half. Ladies and gentlemen, 50% CO2 carbon reduction in the next 10 years. We don't have much time left. So as um, Barack Obama so rightfully alluded to, says that we are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. Big question is, what exactly are we going to do about it? Now, I would like to uh, close off with this, um, this uh, uh, example and story. Yeah, when I was growing up, the brightest and the smartest would gravitate towards learning medicine, law, and engineering. Over the last 10 years, the brightest and the best have all shifted their focus to learning two things, computer engineering and data science. Everyone seems to want to focus on being the next person uh, to invent an app so addictive that they will pay them billions of dollars. Yeah. Now, young people in the room, listen carefully. Yeah. The world does not need another TikTok, Facebook, or Instagram so that you guys can get better entertained while being seated on the toilet bowl. It's about time you young people 
get serious with the choice of your education in solving real problems for the planet. So, my conclusion, what is our role as individuals? Now, some of you may have been offended by me calling you out as a 21st century illiterate, far more than the fact that your house is being set on fire. The truth is, we are facing a much bigger problem in the world than to spend time fighting over our petty little differences. You know, while listening to all the esteemed speakers that came before me, it occurred to me that who am I to be standing up here? Uh, I am not a climate scientist. I am not an inventor like Mr. Young, and certainly I'm not a policymaker. Why am I being invited up here to speak? The answer is obviously very simple. We need the outsiders as much as we need the insider to give voice to this very important matter. So, ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to think about this when you go home. When you go home, I want you to confront your mom with her own version of plastic bag obsession, whatever it may be, I want you to take this key action item and say, hey, you know, how can I help you to see uh, that change is necessary, change is important, right? Don't do that with your beautiful words or global statistics because your mom will see right through it. Yeah. Instead, go home, use your action. Use your action to convince your mom because action speaks louder than words. Thank you very much.